In today's episode of EU4, I'll play as Hungary and create a Hungarian-Austrian Empire. Although not quickly, because it requires tech level 20, but there's a way to bypass it, which I'll show later. Thanks to Hungary's new missions and ideas, which I feel might have been changed, but but I'm too lazy to check it. I'll create a unique combination of cavalry and artillery, something like that. There may be high inflation issues in this campaign. I'll embarrass even this gentleman. Hungarians and Poles will understand. Welcome imperialists! Lucas here. Hungary is an apostolic kingdom with nice bonuses, suggesting a playstyle I won't follow today. Maybe some other time. Hungary got some unique government reforms, especially military ones, and a new achievement, which, I, which I'll get because it's easy. First, I set rivals. Poland, Lithuania, Ottoman Empire, and grand privileges. Standard moves, no surprises. I turn off army and fort maintenance, which we have plenty, because my ruler is dead. Varna, Varnenchik, the defeat at Varna. Remember, I used a trick for a cheaper military advisor because I'll need many points. I also hired court advisors and set a military court. A new monument in Hungary might suggest the cause of the high inflation I mentioned earlier, but that's not the case. Now a very important matter, diplomacy. I insult the Burgundian rival Savoy to ally with them and later take a royal marriage. Burgundy will balance future wars with Austria unless I can peacefully annex it, which I don't know about yet. I also insulted Poland to ally with their rival, the Teutonic Order. Finally, Austria, though not very necessary early on. In the beginning, as Hungary, I had to act quickly to complete these three missions in succession. Thus, I promptly recruited a free mercenary company, granted a prestige privilege, and insulted Wallachia. Hungary insults a lot of countries. This allowed me to arrange a royal marriage with Moldavia, followed by an alliance. Thanks to this, I completed the old alliance's mission. This gave me an additional relation, which I will need in a while. I also completed the mission for Moldavian control, increasing my chance to gain the duchy in the upcoming Moldavian Civil War event. I need to develop Hungary by four levels, focusing on Nitra in Slovakia to develop gold mines quickly. Did I mention that Hungary got a new organization? It might even be useful. After all, I have a few good forts in Slovakia. After advancing three development points, I was able to complete the mission to weaken Poland, granting me a casus belli to establish a union over them. I wanted to seize this opportunity right away. When Poland forms a union with Lithuania, it would be harder. With the country about to disintegrate, after the disastrous Battle of Varna, the death of King Vladislaw and the loss to the Ottomans, the Voivode Janos Hunyadi called together a diet in an attempt to unite the country again. The division was almost unmanageable and anarchy was close. I made Janos the ruler despite Austria's objections. He was an excellent leader and general, a true Hungarian hero with a mustache. I raised army and fort maintenance, then invaded Wallachia and Byzantium. Seems like a good opportunity. However, Byzantium did not join this war. I feel very deceived. Poland chose Jagiellon. Of course, Poland was now seen as a great power, but not for long. Moldova decided to support me, which wasn't necessarily good because it delayed the mission. Unfortunately, I couldn't conquer everything. <coughs> During the civil war, Moldova chose the Hungarian side, I think. Yes, that's right, it became my march. I managed to deal with Dracula then. I could now grant the strong duchess privilege. Next, I invaded Bosnia and Serbia. Serbia was my real target, but it had a guarantee from Turkey, so I couldn't attack it directly. I also started building a spy network in Poland. I defeated the enemy's forces in Croatia, completely, and then in Chile. Easily, I conquered Serbia as follows, I took Kosovo for myself and made Bosnia my vassal. Then I proceeded to liberate Bosnia from Herzegovina. Hungary is now also a world power. I was the first country in the world to introduce better military technology and a potential champion emerged. Will it be as usual? Let's see. Andrew, you rule. Meanwhile, the Ottoman Empire conquered Byzantium. How did I miss that? Although not entirely, because it remained on that island. Interestingly, Czechia now has a Silesian vassal. The Renaissance has also emerged in the world, so I waited until now to expand the mine in Nitra. I decided not to complete this mission yet. I prefer to do it only after integrating Bosnia. I also reclaimed some land. Of course, rebellions had to break out. I also completed the mission to expand the gold mine. Yes, gold income exceeded 50%, but thanks to that, I will expand my mine even more. It has little chance of collapsing at this point and even less so in the future. Yum, my gold. In Slovakia, the Dragon Order headquarters were established and now it's time to attack Poland with the help of my allies. The goal was to renew the Hungarian-Polish Union, Statuta Valakorum. The advance of the Ottoman Empire has completely changed the political geography of Southeastern Europe and many Slavs and Romanians are leaving their old homes to resettle in the border areas of our kingdom. So how will we handle all this? These are our lands and peace must be restored. 
Meanwhile, I completed the mission to integrate Croatia, which didn't give me Croatia, but allowed for its faster annexation within a few years. While my allies were bleeding, I marched my army straight to Krakow. Krakow fell in just over 200 days, and then I marched straight to Warsaw. Yes! Of course, the nobility wanted financial aid, and after the fall of Warsaw, I went to defend Vienna. In fact, Austria was more of a hindrance than a help in this war. Eventually, I defeated the Polish army near Krakow, not Vienna, as they simply fled. I also began preparations for my next war with Venice, or the Ottoman Empire. Both of these countries were very, very exhausted from the war at that moment. Regent Janos has suddenly died, rather suspiciously, leaving the throne vacant. The von Habsburg dynasty of Austria still desires to control our throne, but there is also the son of the great voivode Janos Hunyadi. It's not my fault, I had nothing to do with it, really, that option is blocked, and to be frank, I was ready to worsen relations with the Austrians. Now I just had to fight a war with Poland for another three years. Oops! That's why after the fall of Podolia, I withdrew my main armies to Hungary, where I had a rebellion to suppress. I also renewed royal marriages with all countries except the Austrians. The war continued, but I no longer participated in it. It happened, Matthias took power in Hungary. A revolt broke out in Croatia, which I set out to suppress, and I ended the war with Poland by securing the Union and quite a lot of money. But it was bloody. Mostly my allies died though. After this war, I also ended the alliance with the Teutonic Order. My alliance with Austria was also coming to an end, which was predictable. The Ottoman Empire was waging a rather heavy war, which was a good opportunity to invade. The union with the Jagiellonians was destroyed, but also strengthened. The Ottoman allies surprised me at that moment. I also began the process of integrating Croatia and then declared a holy war on the Ottomans. Yes, it was a bit risky. But I also like challenges. It was good that my alliance with Austria ended. The gates of Constantinople fell, so I decided to storm. Although looking at the losses, it wasn't a good idea. Battles with the Ottoman armies weren't hard to win though. I had a huge numerical advantage, but it also seemed that the quality of my commander had an impact. And thanks to the Crimean fleet, I destroyed the entire Ottoman army. Well, at least half of it. So. For storming the next fortress, I sent mercenaries and allied troops, and then I found the other half of the Ottoman army. Either I imagined it, or I accidentally killed Osman, because I handed Constantinople over to Moldova, and now I see Osman has an idiot on the throne. And it's all thanks to that Moldavian mission, because as Hungary, I had the Ottoman Empire as a rival and Moldova as an ally. Oops, in a short time, I also made all the vassal states very loyal. I couldn't believe I managed to get that wargola while waging war with Osman. Although maybe I shouldn't be surprised. With loans from residents, I introduced institutions in the country. And for the first ideas for Hungary, I chose aristocratic ideas. I admit, I thought about the first choice for a long time. Since the war with the Ottoman Empire was going too easily, I also attacked the Serbs. I wanted to complete this mission because I really liked the bonus. Now I'm reducing aggressive expansion for 20 years. And from the Ottoman Empire... I take the following piece, these provinces, this money, mainly because I remembered at that moment that Byzantium still exists. I couldn't believe I got to that island, because the Byzantine fleet is bigger than mine. The army of Matthias I. With strong neighbors on all sides, the Hungarian kingdom has often had a need for a strong army. In wars past, our nobles have supplied most of our armed forces with mercenary bands hired to complement their forces. I think I will invest honestly in that black army. Let's see how it performs. The cost is small, but where is that black army for hire? Hello? Oh, here's the bonus. Ah, they showed up after a month. Byzantium fell and was reborn like a phoenix from the ashes, but as a duchy. Further reforms of Matthias. I focused on administration here. The country's expansion continued. My ruler also attracted the right people to the court. After modernizing the Hungarian cavalry, I attacked Regusa, which was allied with France. What? But I saw, dear viewers, that you wanted this war, so I attacked it. I hoped France wouldn't reach me quickly. I didn't anticipate that they might try to reach me by sea. However, they were met by my vassal's army. Although, to be fair, they took a good defensive position. For me, I also invested in the Black Army 
army. This started the Hungarian games. The army, I must admit, was very brave. The French didn't stand a chance, although they had a general good at retreating. Another reform at the third level. This was my favorite tax reform. Everyone will now pay 50% higher taxes. From the Ottoman Empire, I settled for money and war reparations to attack that country again in seven years. This war also made me realize I had a gap in fortifications. Fortunately, France didn't sell its skin cheap. They paid me a large tribute for peace. Hungarian armies reached the Pope's treasury and I might plunder it. Over 5,000 gold in the treasury and not even that high inflation yet. After plundering the Curia, I prefer to improve relations with the Pope anyway. After integrating Bosnia, I secured it, added to the states. That's why I completed this mission to lower autonomy in every province of Bosnia. A strange event occurred. The Teutonic Order attacked Poland. The Order's troops were quickly defeated. I gained some provinces for Poland, specifically so that the rest of the Teutonic Order wouldn't join the Empire. I asked the Pope to sponsor partial construction in my country, which allowed me to start building work workshops and churches at very low prices. I remember that I integrated Croatia too quickly because I wanted to retake those two provinces for it. Oops, maybe it was a good time to invade Bohemia. Earning 51 gold already, Hungary had a really strong economy. An excellent advisor also appeared at my court, whom I immediately hired. As the first development from the era, I chose less aggressive expansion and the second will be vassal transfer. I must admit, Matthias is really a good ruler. He is fair, disciplined. What more could you want? I conquer five provinces from the Czechs, plus I take a lot of money. Oof, this threatens me with a small coalition. But who cares about it? It was necessary for me to force a union on them. In the capital, I started building a library, which, it seems to me, is related to this mission. France proposed an alliance to me, but then I saw who was on their throne. I could do nothing but make claims to the French throne, and then declare war. But what truce? Three years, that's not so bad. So my diplomacy began to improve relations with all the larger countries around. I even moved merchants to Germany to speed up the decline of my aggressive expansion here. I also noticed that the chances of my mine in Nitra collapsing are really low compared to a standard mine in Kosovo. Yes, that was the moment when I decided to expand even more. The peace with France ended, and there is no one on the throne, so I declare war immediately, since a union with France is suicide. So I decided on something I normally wouldn't do. Just for this one war, I will choose espionage ideas and develop them to the second level. Yes, you guessed right, I plan to take other ideas. I can't play every campaign with the same ideas, i.e. espionage and aristocratic. It's just too boring. And since I don't want to end this war quickly, I will focus on fighting battles with my black army to achieve an achievement. But they attack my regular army, what is this? I also use the Golden Age. This might not hurt me so much. Yes, at this moment I realized that these must be battles with different countries. Of course, they changed it in the last hotfix. It counts three battles per country. In Hungary, I did the same trick as in Sweden. Namely, I started building a monument to the second level on pause and completed a mission that raises my monument construction to the next level. Thus, I get the third for 2.5 thousand instead of 5 thousand. The upgrade also costs me only 2.5 thousand. By the way, see what great progress I'm making? To complete this monument, I will even take a loan, so I won't lose so many diplomatic points. And luckily, the coalition will be much smaller. Hungary is really a union master, and the ideas I needed for this, I know it hurts, I'm sorry, are economic ideas. I rarely play with them recently, so I'm glad I will have a chance to use them now. I take them because they will reduce inflation. They reduce, again, the chance that the gold will collapse. Interest per annum also decreases by half a point, and they give, of course, a bonus to production. And it so happens that this monument also has an interest per annum minus one. The next war I declared was, of course, retaking Constantinople for Byzantium. Although here, I don't have to worry about victory. I wonder why I have the most cardinals in the richest provinces I have. And they are so close to this rich province with gold. Suspicious. How to say, I just fell into another personal union. Really powerful. So not only do I control most of Eastern Europe, but also a large part of Western Europe in 1488. It surprised me a bit because once Paradox nerfed the Polish tree so it wouldn't do what Hungary is doing now. Even the Palatine declared war on me now, but I don't predict victory for them. Although my armies are far 
away, I must admit. However, the emperor was punished. In the second war with the Ottoman Empire, I took more territories and quite a lot of money, and I still forgot to click this mission. Maybe it will come in handy in the next one. The Golden City was expanded, which means I can further expand my gold mine as the chances of collapse are minimal, and they will be even smaller. I was already earning 30 gold from gold, and now I can choose a new resource to be produced in our capital, because currently it's grain which is weak, and if there was no faceting before, I would introduce glass. But because we got it already, I will introduce iron. Price-wise, it's the most profitable over time. I also finally started distributing the Order of the Dragon everywhere in my territories. I was well ahead with technology, so I could afford it. Hungary now also has a very strong privilege, reducing the cost of maintaining forts on the borders with our enemies, which I will actually use. It was time to annex Bohemia to Hungary as well. Austria will just be, you know, the cherry on top. But I didn't do much in this war. My vassals took care of everything. Lithuania and Poland even took care of the Swedes. And soon, the union over Bohemia was established. And no one cared. Another union for the collection. I instructed my diplomats to focus mainly on my subjects, because I had many of those countries. Since every one of my provinces had the Order of the Dragon, I decided to complete this mission to gain a lot of army tradition. It turned out to be less than I expected. I also focused on keeping autonomy as low as possible, because I wanted to quickly enact another reform, a military one, allowing me to have 100% cavalry in my army and very cheap cavalry. Speaking of cheap cavalry, I just chose this policy. Because I... I... I had forgotten about it. Completing this mission quickly will be very helpful for this reform. Oh, this is really powerful. So, I quickly changed the edict and developed the province in Pozone. It seems worthwhile mainly for military points. Additionally, I started building new buildings. The crown land gained this way was used to grant another privilege because my ability to manage the country was running out. Then I immediately completed this mission. I must admit, Janos Vit with Janos Vites will be useful. I am very close to the next reform, which will be in less than a year. I also secured the loyalty of the Czechs, giving Hungary the opportunity to join the empire. I might have done this at the wrong time because I don't want to be become a duchy. I'll see what happens. All right. I'm no longer worried because it says I'll probably take over the electorship from the Czechs. To secure this decision, I'll form an alliance with the current emperor and increase diplomatic reputation. Although I'm not sure if it influences it. Luckily, the emperor seems favorable, as do most duchies. The Palatinate didn't see what was coming. Meanwhile, I took out loans to develop a monument to gold at a very low price. I didn't see any mission giving a free level for it. That would be too overpowered. I also made a temporary alliance with Venice. Meanwhile, I joined the empire and yes, became an elector. The next step is to humble Austria and bring it under a personal union. For that, Austria needs to be weaker and smaller. I also heard news about colonialism from Portugal and I used this to introduce colonialism in key provinces in Carpathia. It was very profitable. However, I couldn't introduce the privilege from the mission yet. After joining the Holy Roman Empire, I didn't need the alliance with the Palatinate. Although maybe I do? Never mind. Now I had an army reform to implement thanks to this government decision. But I have to wait until I get the 25%. Then I prepared to develop Carpathia, this glowing region, increasing production to level 6. Protestantism appeared, and I'm seriously considering adopting it, although it would delay my becoming the Holy Roman Emperor. But I'm the defender of the faith, so no. Therefore, I lost the war with Crimea, admitting defeat and losing my defender of the faith status. Sad. Now I could change my religion to Protestant. One main reason is the bonuses, among other benefits of this religion. I immediately bought the defender of the faith and lost my government form. No. All right, I stayed on the Catholic path because I'm not sure if the new government form will be available with Protestantism. I'll test it. Overall, Protestantism would be very good for Hungary. I conquered the whole Crimea for Lithuania. Then I quickly developed the Golden City. But something is wrong. Despite the increased modifier, the collapse chance remains the same. I finally introduced colonialism in Sepes because my wealthy Slovakia was there. Then I attacked Austria with Venice's help. Vienna fell quickly, so I attacked Austria's allies. I had the chance to end the Neapolitan Aragonese Union. In Byzantium, it seemed like the 10th Pretender Rebels' rebellion occurred. What's wrong with that country? My diplomats were improving relations with the electors. Gold rush? Not much. Byzantium, get help! I ended the Aragonese Neapolitan Union. I took five provinces from Austria, giving two to Venice. Yes, I'll take them back later. I immediately ended my alliance with Venice. Since my ruler is middle-aged, I'm not taking this mission too early. Remember, the casus belli lasts 25 years, but tends to disappear when your ruler dies. Meanwhile, France wanted to join the empire, and I think I'll support it. The Reformation era began quickly. France joined the empire, which is funny to see as one of the duchies of the empire. But what about the Black Army's end? No one told me. 
Luckily, I can make decisions making Hungary powerful with mercenaries, and my black army still defeats Ottoman forces. It will succeed eventually. Beautiful. Bulgaria was liberated. Constantinople too, adopting Greek culture earlier. Macedonia is also free, giving me many volunteers and a great general. Now I must conquer these provinces? I started a war with Venice, using the opportunity from their excommunication. And I have a long border with Venice. Next I chose the quality idea, or maybe offensive. Since the Mamluk Sultanate began to border me, or rather my vassal, Hungary became the bulwark of Christianity. I'll take this mission because I'll forget in three years. Three years for the Austria war. After integrating Moldavia, I got a new estate, the Cossacks. From Venice, I took everything profitable, securing Dalmatia. I got the Cases belly for a personal union over Naples allied with Castile. I'll use this. I found out that achieving this achievement in Hungary isn't easy. My vassals destroy all my opponent's armies. Lithuania joined the empire, but surprisingly, Poland hasn't yet. Soon, I easily established a union over Austria, which hates me now. This led me towards the empire's future. I could either subjugate all the elector princes by conquering them or through diplomacy. Let's try a diplomatic approach. I already have many subordinate states. Currently, four electors support me and three support Palatinate. What? Why did three leagues attack Austria? What happened? My main goal was to increase crown land and implement seven reforms to create a multicultural European empire. This led me to establish Austro-Hungary earlier. I'm a bit greedy. So I went to war for the crown of Naples. You won't believe it, but I have a chance to put a ruler on Moscow's throne. I'm building the last court. Tell me now that Hungary isn't a lawful country. The union with Naples will anger some countries, but I'll survive. And the endgame reward for integrating Naples is out of this world. Although I'd prefer to have that administrative efficiency till the end of the game too. I probably have too many diplomatic relations. So, I'll soon start integrating Byzantium. The first good news is that I became the new emperor of the empire. The second good news is my ruler is very old. The third good news is I started a war with the Sultanate. I urgently need that monument. And I had to decide if I wanted to admit the Teutonic Order to the empire. I think I do. I'll just conquer them after they join. I'll probably complete this mission after my current ruler dies, even though I'd get additional imperial authority. Will my black company finally get to fight someone new? No, they're fleeing. Guess who is now on the Russian throne and who I'll soon declare war on for a personal union? What more could I want? Yes, it'd be good to wait for Russia to form. Maybe Moscow can catch up on technology in five years. Unfortunately, I had to intervene in another war that didn't concern me much because Thuringia was attacked in a succession war. You won't believe it, but I got a minimal number of provinces to get just that monument. A successor to the Russian throne appeared, so I didn't wait and attacked. Honestly, I didn't have much to do in this war, like in all the wars I'm fighting now, and I quickly forced the Union. If I had waited until level 10, Russia would have formed and been much bigger. I started a small war in the Holy Roman Empire to convert as many states as possible to Catholicism. In Hesse, there's a center of reformation in the capital, so if I convert this country to the one true faith, the center of reformation will disappear. Did you know that trick? Protestant centers of reformation are worse because they are not in capitals currently. What's the difference between imperial ban and imperial campaign? Besides the conquest goal, of course. Taking Venice is probably worth a small coalition, at least I think so. Though honestly, I'm not afraid of a coalition. I must admit this casus belli intrigues me and I'll probably go through with it, especially since I started another big war with Protestant principalities. I wonder how many will stay with a different religion after this war. I first moved my army to rescue Prague, where there are many heretics. Hey, give this army a chance to get there. I really want this achievement. Okay, okay, enough on that. Thank you very much. Has anyone seen the heretic army? Plus cavalry is OP. Great religious purges in the empire. I started a religious war before it was trendy. By the way, you can get up to eight state advancements in one battle if eight states participate. In one war, I converted 10 principalities. I made Szczecin my vassal and then converted it to the one true faith, which also caused it should disappear. Hello? At worst, it will disappear in 31 months when I convert that province. And now I'm starting another round of conversions. Unfortunately, the Protestant League formed, although it probably won't be numerous. I also got an achievement. The hardest part was catching the opponent myself before they did. In 1552, I finally carried out the seventh government reform. It established a very strong Hungarian government, and it finally opened the way for my country's full development until the end. Pest was renamed to Budapest, the peoples of Hungary. Ever since its establishment, the Hungarian kingdom has been home to many cultures besides Hungarians, Slovaks, Rusins, Romanians, Croats, Germans, Jews, Kumans, and many others. For centuries, these people called Hungary their home and helped us build and protect it. Plus, a lot more texts to read. I must admit that both bonuses for cultures are very tempting. Playing Hungary with religious ideas is very strong at this point. And creating one culture? I'll... 
take more acceptable ones. Now I focused on improving relations, not only with electors, but mainly with principalities. I have a feeling that the Protestant League won't erupt. Is this a joke? What? There's nothing to show in this war. Speed 5. And let my unions handle it, I don't care. I'll just watch the numbers go down. Okay, I've never seen such a positive attitude in war. They're losing badly and still believe in victory. They have no army. Progress from my victory is 99% and they're still full of fight. What's going on with this game? Meanwhile, I've already gotten rid of all the conversion centers and peace reigned in the empire. The Catholics won, of course. It couldn't have been otherwise. Uh... Did I mess something up? I forgot about religious supremacy. Oops! Right. Uh, but my emperor didn't die, what's going on? So I'll use the excess imperial authority to persuade the remaining states to change their religion. I recommend starting with the biggest one because each subsequent conversion is harder. Sometimes I had to buy a religion change earlier. Remember the pretender rebels in Byzantium? They're still rising up, but it doesn't change the fact that we finally became a multicultural empire. Which brings a new form of the imperial Hungarian monarchy, which is really cool, but something's missing here. Hello? I also completed the mission for the improved black army, which will now give us professionalism during recruitment. I'm surprised, but if I click this, I'll complete the whole tree. Oh, not yet, you're still left. Of course, the universities. Now I'll play around with my cavalry because it's really powerful. Artillery is also effective, especially since I have a lot of discipline and I took even more. Maybe this time I'll manage to fight a few battles, who knows? Now I'm mainly focusing on uh, creating uh, some smaller principalities. For the next ideas, I have to choose some diplomatic ones. I I think influence will be very useful, especially since they'll work well with quality ones. Did you know that quality plus influence also reduces annexation costs? I totally forgot they changed that a year ago. Now basically, I just have to wait until I have administrative technology level 15. 13 years, I'll tell you, having so many personal unions ruins the fun and I have nothing to do. Although somehow a Mamluk got to my capital and it didn't end well for the Mamluk army, for that army too. What's with these cannons? I invaded Karaman to secure some nice borders before forming the empire. Besides, I really want to play around with my cavalry before the armies of my personal unions arrive. Although, in this battle I still have significant support from enemy forces that have artillery in the front line. This results in a literal slaughter. Let me know because I don't remember having such a problem with bot armies having such bad composition in previous patches. I attacked even larger armies of my opponents. And they stand no chance against me considering the carnage that's happening here. Beautiful. I even managed to catch the rest of the Mamluk army and inflict more losses on them. Although I'm also taking significant ones. But when the dice rolled, I was inflicting massive losses. Really massive. So much so that ultimately my opponent's armies were completely wiped out. This rarely happens with such large countries. Now I have a very important decision ahead of me. After forming Austro-Hungary, should I adopt its traditions and ambitions? This means I will lose the cavalry to infantry ratio, in my ideas, among other things, in favor of new ones that are also very strong but in a different way. Honestly, if I were to continue playing for world conquest, I would probably switch to these Austro-Hungarian ideas. Look at that artillery. Ultimately, the army statistics would look like this. But can I restore Hungary's name? And color, what's the point? Can I change the flag too? Another big downside is that the missions don't develop in any way, unfortunately, but in the empire they still vote for Hungary. Another cool thing is that at this moment cavalry is cheaper for me than infantry. And artillery, although quite costly. I think I would capture Dalaskogan as quickly as possible to reduce its costs. I'm proud of this empire, it was really fun to play, yes! They also fixed the Imperial Hungarian monarchy in the hotfix. Nice icon. And after switching to Protestant religion, because I promised you I'd check it out, the Imperial Hungarian monarchy remains. In this episode, I'm showing you another very strong country that was changed in the latest patch, Hindu Mongolia, which in less than 100 years conquered a really powerful part of the world. 